Hey guys, how you doing? This is Mr. Gaza with Gaza Performance Garage. Welcome. Today, we will be working on my BMW E39. It's a 1998 528i, and that's the 2.8 liter. Today, we will attempt to change, but this car that I have has 450,000 miles on there. Do the math. It's still running, okay? So, with that said, let's get to work and uh, see how we can work our way around this situation without pulling the intake manifold off of this car. Okay guys, right here, I already started a job. I went ahead of you guys just pulling off the intake manifold. But uh, nevertheless, I will show you exactly how it was done. Here. This is the throttle body for the uh, intake manifold right here. I use a, it has four 10 millimeter bolts that are holding it. And each bolt has a specific length. So be sure not to remove these bolts if you can, if you, if you can so you can just pull off the cable. Let's see if I can just like leave these alone by themselves and just have it sit up on the top right here. Just to avoid any confusion, okay? Of course, you know there were coolant lines heading into that throttle body that is to warm the throttle body up in case you're in a cold, you know, of course, the heating system. So what I did, instead of losing any um, fluids, I just used a hose and just uh, connected them together. It's just basically like a bypass so I don't lose any fluid. I just lo I lost like um, a couple drops just pulling it off. And these are the clips here for the traction control system. This is very simple, it's very easy. Um, trust me, anybody can remember these few clips that we have right here. See, let me come around right here and get some lights for you. The starter is just right there. It's just right there. And uh, in order to pull that starter, you will have to go behind here, beside the firewall, to gain access to the bolts that are holding it on to the transmission. So, it's a very, it's a, it, it seems to me, what's, what's in the way right here? Hmm. I don't think there's much holding it in the way. Oh, okay. It's very simple. I'll show you where the starter is. The starter is right there. You see the solenoid on top? The starter solenoid on top? I do apologize for the lighting right there on the top. Let's see. All right. If we pull some of these things out of the way, I will gain access to it. But I'm not about to pull off the whole intake manifold. That's just crazy. I'm not gonna do that. I have enough space right here just by removing the intake manifold pipe, throttle body, and the filter housing. Very nice. This thing with the older cars, you have so much space. Much space. So with that said, let's get to work. Okay guys, what we did was we removed the idle control valve 
that is right in the way right here. The idle control valve goes right here. We remove that, remove the vacuum line that goes on the inside of the cab, okay? And uh, all these clips, they go to a designated area. So you don't have to worry about putting them in the wrong air, wrong place. And we have full clearance of the starter right there. It's just right there. I can just easily unbolt it from the back side, which I will show you right now. There we go. It uses two bolts that are on the back. I don't know if you can see. Uh, two bolts right there. One on this end. Right there. And one right between the holes right there. And it uses a uh, 12, I-12 um, socket. And it's a 12. Which is what I have. Um, an E12 socket. I think I got an E12. Yeah, right here. Right here. This is an E12. And you have to pull it from the back. Okay? So, it goes to show that we have access to everything in under the intake manifold just by pulling the plenum, the throttle body, the uh, idle control valve and you have access to the starter and the crank shaft sensor if you have the time which is what I'm going to do I'm going to change that as well so I don't have to pull this again and I'm going to change everything so that's this is a very easy easy fix. I'm going to go ahead now, proceed to pulling the starter, which is right there. That's a starter solenoid. That's right on the top. And that's the starter right there. Okay guys, in order to remove this uh, starter with the start bolts, you can either use, this is how the bolts look. You can use, you can either use a 3 8 socket wrench because that's what I have to use. I had to use because it was so close and my sockets weren't deep enough. So I had to use basically a socket wrench. Um, They said to use an E12 socket, and uh, that's what I use. But I had the short uh, socket. In order for you to get to this one, you need the extended socket, E12 socket, to get to this. Not in a half inch drive, but a 3 8 drive. It's very important. Please focus. Very important. Because there's only two screws holding two bolts holding this up and I had to use a 3 8 um, so socket wrench I mean a ratchet wrench to pull this out so right now the starter is loose the terminals um, are off and I am going to pull this starter off I'm going to work my way around the, the dipstick the oil dipstick to see what we can do okay up here put this right here so you can get some lights and let's work magic Backside of the dipstick and go around. 
And here we go, guys. We have my starter. It's the old starter. And uh, from what I can see, we have burned this one up. Oh yeah. Take a look. Hey guys. Here is the uh, starter I just pulled out with ease. I did not have to uh, remove the intake manifold. You could just basically remove everything on the intake side, remove the intake plenum, and uh, this hole right here, there's a pin that goes right in this, this spot to align it, excuse me. and. Uh, this is a fairly new starter, but because I was starting it all the time to see where the problem white was, wasn't starting, it finally gave out and it's no longer active. This is no longer activating the starter. All right, so let me go ahead and replace this starter so we can get into business. All right, guys, this is a new starter. I am going to snake the starter in. I'm gonna, let's see here. Let me put this light up. Do not move on me, boy. I will break you. All right, so here we go. This is a new starter. Let's see right here. I'm gonna remove this. This is where the, uh, the positive charge terminals um, cables are going to go. All of these things out of the way. I'll go ahead and put it up so it will be easier for me to put the cables on. So what I did before, I went on the back side. There's some dirt there. I'm going to clean it up. All right guys, now that I vacuum cleaned that area, I'm gonna snake starter around the dipstick and what you do, you go forward with the starter and back it up and then stick the, uh, the gear inside the uh, housing. All right, so this is how we're gonna do it. Forward. In. The starter is in, guys. So now I'm going to use that uh, socket for the bolt. I mean, actually, the ratchet socket. <laughs> What's wrong with me today? I must be tired. Okay, I'm going to use a ratchet wrench and uh, bring it up the car. Thank <laughs> you. 
very easy to do. It's very good that you tighten them up one at a time. Alright, now I'm going to put on Okay guys, I had to put up the, uh, I had to loosen this hose, basically to have leverage. And then what you do is move the uh, ring for the uh, idle air control valve to go up into the housing, into the uh, intake manifold. Uh, when you're doing, when you do loosen it up like this, you grab it by the backside and wiggle and push upwards. Don't loosen it to the point where it slides further up. Just loosen it where it can turn. And what you do, you wiggle it up until you hear. Um, a guide, a perfect guide is where the rubber right here meets to the black um, uh, plastic intake manifold. And uh, usually it's in this position where you want to have this put in. So what I'm gonna do, uh, let's see here. I have my bolts. My bolts for this, so I'm just going to go ahead and bolt it up. This is the uh, retainer, and it's usually uh, a rubber mount on the retainer that's holding the idle control valve. bad boys in don't use brute force tightening these things all right they're very fragile it could even crack the intake manifold the treading on this as well um, I'll just put this right here and um, this bolt right here let's see put this here first Plug this up. Always try to put it to factory specs, everything. Don't leave anything out. Make sure every bolt goes, goes on. Alright guys, I basically buttoned up everything. The, uh, the idle air control valve is in. I buttoned up the uh, ventilation system for the crankcase. It's buttoned up. Um, I plugged up, plugging on the uh, idle air control valve. The last thing I need is basically the crank sensor. That's the last part that's coming in. I am uh, supposed to get. I'll, I'll, I'm supposed to be getting that part in uh, Monday. I'll just finish up the whole of this for you guys for the uh, the ending of the crankshaft sensor. Okay? Because I really want to change that. I have access to it right here, so I want to get rid of it. I want to get it out of the way. Thank you for watching this video with me. Um, we have learned today that you don't need to remove the intake manifold or fiddle with the fuel injectors or remove a whole bunch of stuff underneath the intake manifold. All you have to do is remove the earbox, the intake plenum, and the throttle body, and you're on your way. So, with that said, I'd like to th say thank you very much. I hope this video was very educational and very informative. If you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe button and the notification sign on the side 
right up there. And um, I'll just wait for you to do that. You subscribe yet? I do appreciate that. Thank you very much. So with that said, thank you for watching Gaza Performance Garage. Please be safe out there. And remember, we love you.